museums in Italy, we will find that the, the essence of their collections is steeped uh, within uh, the history or the accumulation of the history of African people. But that's all the, the field of anthropology is anyway, though, isn't it? For, for the most part. For the most part. It, and again, it depends on what point in time in history you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because as uh, Dr. Clark states uh, quite frequently, it's, it's important for us to understand that half of the history of humanity was over before mm -hmm. the European lived in a house that had a window or developed a shoe. I mean, this, this, this is very basic reality. Now, this, I mean, this, this in no way puts down European history, but it, all it does is put world history into perspective. A, a proper perspective. The first humanity came out of Africa. The first culture and civilization came out of Africa. Now, this is not black history. This is world history. This is knowledge and information that should be taught in every classroom in the world. It is knowledge and information that is not written, as some people have, 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 mm -hmm. have stated. It is not knowledge and information that is written to make black people feel good about themselves. No. It is truth. It is knowledge and information that, that Italian children, that Hispanic children, that Asian children, Asian children need to be conscious of so that they can begin to see themselves and see the world in a much broader perspective. Mm, and that is so very important because now uh, we talk about Afrocentric, but then they give us, on the other hand, multicultural. multicultural. <laughs> and, and one of the things that we deal with in the last chapter of the book, the third segment of the book, talks about uh, the African Renaissance. And it talks about uh, this, this uh, movement throughout the country now to develop what you refer to as, as an African-centered educational base. And the response, the response to that, which has been a multicultural. Now, it's important to note that this concept of multicultural education didn't come up until there was a demand for African-centered education. Never heard about it. <laughs> and uh, in an attempt to water down the African-centered movement, mm -hmm. they've given us multicultural. When in essence, if you understand what uh, uh, Af Afrocentricity is, as Malefe Asante coined the phrase, says, mm -hmm. Afrocentricity deals with the presentation of the story of humanity in a logical sequence. It includes every aspect of world history. So. Afrocentricity is also multicultural in its entirety. It is, it is, it, it, inclusive. It is, it, is, it is inclusive. It is not anti-European. It is pro-humanitarian. It's hard to get them to understand that, though. Well, whether or not people choose to mm -hmm. understand or accept that is something that they have to deal with when they die. Uh, we understand the importance of knowledge and information and the impact it has on us the impact that it has on our children. And we need to understand that we, we are literally in a, in a war. We're in a war for, the, for, the, for our minds. We, we, we live in, 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 a, in a term and under a condition that Dr. Hilliard referred to as conceptual incarceration. Because of our miseducation, we have not cultivated the ability to see ourselves as being more than what our former slave masters said we could be. We are conceptually incarcerated, and any time you can't see yourself as achieving greatness, you will never strive for greatness. When in reality, history documents the fact that African people have given to the world some of its most greatest attributes. Well, we need to say it and say it over again because there are so many of our people, and not only our people, but uh, people in general who don't know the statement that you just made. True. Because they haven't been taught. Just as I said earlier that we've been miseducated, but other people have been miseducated as well. The world has been miseducated. Mm -hmm. And it, again, if you make the comparison between uh, the civil rights movement, the 1960s, and the African Senate movement of the 1990s, you can see some very strong parallels. It wasn't until uh, Martin Luther King and others began to advocate for the civil rights of African Americans that other so-called minorities began to profit and benefit. Jump on the from, bandwagon. Jump on the bandwagon. Make sure, even to, to the point now where women are now classified as minorities. Uh, so the same thing is happening today with the uh, African-centered educational movement. Because of the fact that people of African descent are demanding that their story be taught in the school system because their tax dollars are paying for the schools, they're paying for the books, they're paying for the teachers. That's they right. want the truth to be taught. As a knee-jerk reaction to that, people have begun to insist that we focus on a multicultural, to divert the attention. When in reality, it, it, I mean, whether it's multicultural really doesn't make any difference. As long as you teach the truth and start at the beginning, 
and the beginning will take you back to Africa. Mm. Thank you so much for being here with us. We've been talking with Tony Brother, and he's the author of a new book, and it is simply entitled Nile Valley Contributions, and it's a series. Yes. Uh, tell us uh, briefly, if you will, about the other uh, Sure. Uh, this is volume one of a three-part series. Volume two is uh, tentatively entitled uh, An African Center View of Washington, D.C., Masonry of the United States. Volume three is uh, the African Contributions to Christianity. So we intend to cover a variety of topics over the next uh, five to ten years. Uh, now, is there a number or an address that you can give where we can get in sure. touch with you for speaking engagements as well? Sure. Or for myself or my daughter or okay. my son who I'm, I'm bringing oh, under okay. my wing now <laughs> to prepare him to walk in my footsteps. It's a family affair. It has to be. Uh, the number is area code 301-853-2465. Brother, we thank you so much for coming on Color Me Poetry and sharing with us. And we're going to have you back and we wish you the best for the books and all. And uh, we love your daughter's book as well. And we're certainly going to push that. The new book by Tony Brother is simply entitled Nile Valley Contributions. We ask that you go out to Pyramid. This is our book uh, of the week, and we ask that you go out and buy it and support it. And uh, it's been great having you here on Color Me Poetry. Dan. My pleasure. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back. I'm Danny Queen, and until next time, Color Me Poetry.